Hi, I'm Michael Killen. Silicon Valley is a world leader. And in this valley, everyone is working to be a leader in sustainability. On this show, I'm going to interview an executive from San Jose. He is the district manager of the South Bay Water Recycling Organization. I'm going to ask him, what is San Jose trying to do to make sure this area has water that industry needs as well as what consumers need? His name is Eric Rosenblum. Eric, how are you today? Good evening. So you manage an organization that recycles water. Is that right? That's correct. The uh, city of San Jose is the administering agency for a joint powers authority that includes cities throughout Silicon Valley who all got together and have over the last 15 years invested a quarter of a billion dollars to bring recycled water to the community. Wonderful. So your organization provides recycled water to San Jose and other cities? That's right. What other cities? We extend into Santa Clara and Milpitas as well. Okay. And I sometimes wonder, what's so important about recycled water? Why, why are you doing it? That's a good question. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to using recycled water. And first of all, just so people understand, recycled water is the water that's used once. And instead of putting it, throwing it away and putting it into San Francisco Bay, we take it, we clean it to a very high standard and use it again. The way that we're using it today is to clean it to the point where it can be used for industry, for irrigation, virtually everything but drinking. Uh, according to the health department standards, you can swim in it. It's just not quite of the quality we expect for drinking water here. So the, the reasons we do that are really twofold. One is it reduces the amount of water we throw away into the bay, which makes, means that it's better for the environment. We put less effluent from treatment plants in, back into the environment. But becoming more important every year, it also provides an alternate supply of water to make up for our dwindling drinking water supplies. Dwindling drinking water. So I read around the world, the population keeps growing, businesses keep increasing, and we use more and more water, and that there is less good water available every, every day. Is that correct? That, that in, that's really true. Uh, I think the thing to remember is that water is one of those wonderful substances that there really is no substitute for. I mean, people talk about the oil crisis, but even in the last 20 years, we've developed a lot of alternative fuel supplies that we can use to burn instead of oil or even use to manufacture things from instead of oil. With water, there's really not so much of a choice. I mean, when you want to irrigate your plants, you need water. When you want to have water for, or you want to cool your factories or you want to, to uh, uh, just provide a beverage for your community. You know, water is about it. And so uh, really we, we need to be more conscious of how we use water. We can use less water and in Silicon Valley we've made a lot of strides with water conservation. Uh, we've, our population has grown significantly in the last 20 years but our water use has remained relatively flat as the per capita water use has, has uh, so dropped. It stayed flat because of conservation? Pretty much, that's right. At a certain point, however, you just need to find alternate supplies. Recycled water is one that we manage ourselves. We, we make it here. It's a locally produced supply, and it's drought proof. It's impervious to changes in weather. So it doesn't make sense to throw it away when we can reuse it. Okay. Now, should every community in the United States, maybe the world, focus on developing the ability to recycle water? Uh, it, it's, it really depends on a number of factors. Uh, in general, I think there's probably always benefits in using water more than once. No matter where you are, if you're in a city, you tend to have to bring the water from somewhere else, which means there's transportation costs, costs in pumping and treating. Um, if you have water locally, then you can make use of it directly. Uh, and a lot of communities are doing that. Even individuals with gray water systems are finding ways to use their water more than once. Uh, so I think overall it's, it's certainly true that people should find ways to use less water. And using recycled water is another way to do that. Where do you get your water from? The water that comes into Santa Clara County comes from a lot of different sources. Some of it's rainfall. 
Some of it comes from the mountains. Some of it uh, comes from groundwater. But after it's used, it goes to a wastewater plant. And that's the source of the recycled water. All right. So that's what I'm asking. Where do you, your organization, get your water from? Well, again, after the water is collected, after it's been used, it comes to the wastewater treatment plant. In San Jose, it's the San Jose Santa Clara Water Pollution Control so, Plant. So you're getting it from it's from out of the sewers, out of the sewers, of, businesses, okay. industries, all of the wastewater that we used to think of as a pollutant that we need to throw away, get rid of as soon as possible. We find there's great value in. All we have to do is treat it to the point where we remove the pollution. So okay. that's our challenge. We remove the pollution to the point where it's it's cleaner than river water. Yes. And it's good for virtually everything except drinking. Okay, so you get it from the sewers, mm -hmm. okay, from businesses and from homes, and then you process it, you treat it. And is it just one technique you use for treating the water? Well, we, we have one of the hidden gems of Silicon Valley is What's the that? San Jose Santa Clara Water Pollution Control Plant. It's a billion dollar plus facility, the largest advanced wastewater treatment plant on the West Coast. It goes through a minimum of four different stages. It has a physical process of primary separation, biological process where organics are consumed by bacteria which are then separated, then a, a, another filtration process where it goes through a coal filter, and finally disinfection with chlorine, and the plant is looking now into using ultraviolet disinfection as well. So that's, did you say four processes? Four main processes, yes. And the result, the water coming out is almost good enough to drink? The main difference between the water that comes out of the plant and drinking water is whereas your average water coming out of the ground might have the equivalent of a, a, a third of a teaspoon of salt in five gallons of water, this water has a teaspoon. It has about, uh, in scientific terms you'd say, has about 700 parts in a million of dissolved solids. And that's really the major difference. Okay. I just learned the other day that SAP in Palo Alto has about five thousand six thousand employees and I know they're not in your district but it's just a company I know something about now they're bringing in water for drinking right yes. so they have a pipe coming in and if they were in your district they might also have a second pipe would that be correct that's and exactly one? right okay and so this is not practical right now for homeowners unless somebody has a gigantic estate Possibly. Well, in some parts of the United States already, I'm thinking about in Florida, for example, in the uh, St. Petersburg area, they irrigate, uh, private residences have two pipes also. They've got one for their household use, another pipe for irrigating their front yards. You know, there are places in Australia where they have pipes with recycled water, usually painted purple to distinguish them from water pipes. They actually go into the house and they use that water to flush toilets. So it is possible on a residential basis. In Santa Clara County, however, we don't do that right now. All of our con customers are institutional, commercial yeah. businesses, parks, schools, that sort of thing. All right. So what does an Intel, why do they need recycling water? Why, I think, I'm, I don't know if IBM still has their big disk storage facilities around here, whatever. Why do they need recycling water? Uh, you know, a lot of our, our customers, our new customers are coming from the high tech sector. I, I'm pleased to say that Intel and IBM have both used water for irrigation in the past. One of the brand new uses that we're starting to, to provide recycled water are data centers. Uh, as you may know, the data centers are pretty much the backbone of the internet. I mean, we, we log on, we don't think of what happens where the wires end up, but in a large case, a, a lot of the information flows through uh, multi-block long uh, offices that have nothing but servers in them, and they produce a lot of heat. In fact, the production of heat is one of the challenges of having large data centers. The, they have to be cooled, and the cooling towers that they use have water that evaporates to provide the cooling. It can use drinking water, which they've done in the past, and now many of our new customers are data centers that use recycled water for their cooling towers. Well, when I first thought about a server, and I can, can imagine a server, I had this feeling that there might be some kind of tank attached or uh, up in the ceiling, and somehow they were using the cold water to cool it. But you're referring to something I'm not familiar with. It's a big tower that the water Right, so these, these data centers are air conditioned, and the air conditioners, as they would in your house where you might have a condenser and a compressor outside and the heat just goes in the atmosphere, but there's so much heat produced by these facilities, they need a, a more efficient way to, uh, uh, to get rid of it, and they do that with a cooling tower where the water takes up the heat and then evaporates, and that allows the 
temperature to be maintained and cool the building. Okay. Now, you said many of these business customers or your customers for recycling water use it for irrigation. That's right. But we don't have many farms here. No, but you'd be surprised how much water is used just to irrigate schools and playgrounds and business parks, campuses that all have little green strips in between the buildings. Even the medians of highways all need irrigation to be maintained. Okay, so you have a lot of customers using water for irrigation, and then you have these corporations that are using it probably as part of cooling some kind of manufacturing process, but then you mentioned these data centers. And is this something new, using recycled water for data cooling data centers? Well, in, in our area, we've used recycled water for cooling before. In fact, our largest customers are the power plants that also use recycled water for cooling their, their generators. Uh, one of our first uh, industrial customers was San Jose State University, which used recycled water for its, its central plant. Um, but the data centers presented an interesting challenge because while they didn't have a lot of engines and generators, just the electronic equipment itself produced so much heat, it was necessary to provide water for cooling. And we either had to, in order to meet those needs here in Silicon Valley, we want to have them located centrally here, we either have to find more drinking water or find this alternate supply. And we're pleased that many of these companies were very progressive and were interested in creating a more sustainable footprint, and so they've chosen to use recycled water for cooling instead of drinking water. All right. I started this program by using the word sustainability, and you just brought it up again. And so your, the thing you've been working on, I'd say a good portion of your life, at least maybe the last 20 years, you've been working on helping to sustain water, to make sure this community has water throughout the long haul. Is that correct? That's right. And this reminds me of an organization called uh, Sustainable Silicon Valley. And you know, I spoke with uh, Mariana Grossman, who is the head of that organization, and she told me that water is extremely important and sustaining it, and she has numerous programs. And I believe you're a member of her organization. That's right. Uh, in, in fact, it's, it was a great partnership that we were able to develop. San Jose has been a sponsor of Sustainable Silicon Valley for a number of years. And recently, as we were explaining the value of using recycled water for cooling and the difficulty we have, we have 120 miles of pipeline and we look at the cooling tower customers all along this pipeline and go door to door basically uh, promoting the use of recycled water. And she got together with some of her board members and some folks from IBM and SAP and talked about how they could help develop sustainable water supplies. It came up with the notion of taking all of these individual customers, giving them a, a place they could meet, maybe not a physical place, but a virtual place that they called the EcoCloud, which is a, a platform using social networking tools to allow potential customers, existing customers of recycled water to get together to help promote recycled water use, as well as other sustainable practices. Should I think of the EcoCloud as being synonymous with uh, sustaining water. Is that, is that the main purpose of an, an echo cloud? Well, th th I think the short version is that the eco cloud or echo cloud eco, is, right. is it's like in, in some places they have what they call eco parks where businesses are actually sited together so that one business can provide hot water that's a waste for it but a source for another company and they collaborate to reduce the overall footprint. This is a virtual location. It's not in, in space. It's, it's on the net. It's in the cloud. But it's a place where these companies can collaborate together to learn the best techniques to use water and other resources, materials, air, et cetera, more sustainably. It's got great promise. It's just in its sort of first incarnation. Uh, the EcoCloud website was just introduced in December. Uh, we've already got over 100 members. And I would encourage people to log on to sustainablesv.org and check out Sustainable Silicon Valley and see what other opportunities they may have to, to participate. Would you repeat that URL? Because I think it's important. It's www.sustainablesv.org. So, since you control the recycling water, your organization and the city of San Jose must 
I would imagine, be a driving force with respect to the eco cloud. We've been participants since the beginning, and I think the, the perspective we've brought is that there are lots of places you can find out about environmental information and sustainability as a concept. But the challenge is to bring that information down to the ground on a local level where we could actually make improvements in our daily life to have a lower impact, to create a more sustainable society. And that's one of the things San Jose is trying to do in its work with the, with the EcoCloud and Sustainable Silicon Valley. Okay. And you encourage all businesses that have a need for recycled water to be part of this this eco cloud well first of all we, we'd love for them to contact us if they're anywhere in the cities of Silic of San Jose or Milpitas or or Santa Clara or even the surrounding communities where we'll be extending the pipeline o over the time um, it's uh, San Jose CA slash SBWR uh, dot, excuse me San Jose CA dot gov slash SBWR takes you to the South Bay water recycling website but you could also reach us through the eco cloud and and I think what's important is companies need to be open to using this new resource. Uh, it's the easiest thing is just to keep doing what you're doing now if it works for you. And uh, we're pleased that in Silicon Valley, people are used to using technology to make their lives better. So by and large, companies have been open to the idea of using a different water source for a more sustainable society. Okay. I'm starting to think uh, as you introduce me this, I, even though I've heard of the eco cloud, it, it's a place where Various companies can get together, and in a way, it's to form alliances, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember from concepts of strategy that one forms alliances where one is weak, to be where where something is important, and everyone's weak with it, and to become strong. So this alliance, Eco Cloud, allows the members to all work together and sort of take advantage of resources that others have for the, for the common good? I, I think it's a fair assessment. Um, certainly we see competitors that uh, may compete fiercely in the marketplace, exchange information on how they can be more sustainable yeah. together. I think of it more in terms of the water hole where a predator and prey can sometimes meet together just to take a drink. Okay, that's, that's a good analogy, yes. And so water is extremely important. Now, how many years have you been at the South Bay Water Recycling Organization? I, I've been with the city and the treatment plant for 25 years now. We just started South Bay Water Recycling in 1993, and I've been with the project since the inception. When I sit here listening to you, you obviously have a passion for helping the community, and a uh, passion for conserving water. Would I be correct? Sure. Why do you have that compassion? What in your background makes you want to help the community? What in your background one wants you to help conserve a, a critical resource, water? Well, by profession, I'm an engineer, specializing in water resources, but an environmental engineer. And just if you take a tour of the wastewater treatment plant, you immediately see that we've inherited a tremendous resource. I mean, we, the facility was built in the 1950s, and there were, even you look back at the water supplies like Hetch Hetchy that were built during the heroic age of engineering. We, we've received so much from people who came before. I think it's really our role to return the favor and to provide something of equal value to our children so they have an easier time. And I think the best thing we can do is to create the institutions that allow them to have the same advantage of resources that we've had. What recommendations do you have for companies in Silicon Valley that have a need for a lot of water? Well, first and foremost, consider the use of recycled water. Be open to that as an alternative. Second, perhaps to uh, talk to their uh, colleagues in other companies that have used recycled water successfully to learn about the technology. Certainly, we'd like them to contact us if they're in our service area. And lastly, to look at uh, the Sustainable Silicon Valley website and consider joining that organization and benefiting from the experience of others. One more last question. For those companies that do not take advantage of recycling water, what can they do with respect to their waste to make it 
easier for your systems to purify the water or to clean the water up, make it uh, well, usable? Th thank you for that question, Michael. I mean, it's it's something that we often don't think about when we throw things away that, you know, there's just an away they go to. In fact, now that we're using water over and over again, we realize that what we put in the water as waste has to be taken out again. So they should be more conservative about what they put in the water in the first place. You've been a good guest. Hi, my guest has been Eric Rosenblum. He is the direct district manager of the South Bay Water Recycling. 